What's up guys? I got multiple requests to give you a behind the scenes look of my YouTube studio and what makes it all up and how I achieve the look and vibe that I do on Simply Cyber. So in this video, I'm going to be going through the lighting, the video, the audio, and the software that I have used in order to make Simply Cyber. You can see back there, um, the studio is actually quite tiny. Uh, it's in the corner of a guest bedroom. It's about four foot by four foot. Uh, so it looks much different in real life than it does on stream. Uh, but we're gonna get right into it and show you what's going on. So very first thing I wanna point out just from this distance, I do have a, a standing desk. The standing desk is electronic height adjustable. It goes up to four feet, down to two feet. And I have a Vera desk um, kind of active stool right there and then um, compression pads like foam shock absorb pads for standing. So I, I kind of rotate between standing and sitting, uh, mostly standing, especially while I'm streaming. So continuing on, you can see for lighting, I do use a traditional three point lighting system. This is pretty standard once you start getting into it. You can see my key light is this UB size uh, 10 inch ring light that's kind of off kilter to the top right of my monitors. I would use a larger fill light, but because of the way my monitors are orientated, I can't really get a light in there. Um, and there's just not enough space between the wall and the monitor. Here is my fill light. This is a newer, uh, came in a two pack. I just have a boom arm mounted and bring it around to, to fill in the corner of my face. And up top is a rim light that kind of lights the top back of me. Now, not part of a three point lighting setup, but worth noting is this newer RGB 480. This particular light, you can change all the colors. I mostly run it on blue, throwing it back up to this felt. And that's pretty much all it is for the lighting. Now you can see that I do use this black felt, uh, $25 at Joanne Fabrics, and I've got it hung on a couple dowels with command strips up at the top or command hooks. Uh, and that's, that's just basically the magic of it. Also one other kind of fun light, I have an on-air light that I use. Um, that was really um, to let my family know that I was streaming, but you know they know when I'm streaming now, so I just have it for fun and enjoy using it. Now, next item is the video. The video is accomplished with my camera, which is a Sony A6400. Uh, I bought the body. It's a fairly expensive camera, but it is kind of the go-to uh, professional camera for content creators that aren't corporate. And uh, you know, it's about $900 for the body, fairly expensive, uh, but worth every penny of it. I use it every single day. Also attached to it is a Sigma 16 millimeter F14 lens. Uh, this lens was about $400 and it's an excellent lens. And because of that F14, and the, the reason why it's so expensive is it allows me to get this bokeh effect, which makes it look like when I'm on stream that the depth of field is actually quite deeper than it is from this tiny little space that I operate in. Now, to tie it all together and completely not necessary, but I love it, is this Glide Gear TMP100. Now you'll see here on the um, studio that it's mounted with a single arm it sits up here, it is a teleprompter. Now, I'm filming on the camera right now, but the camera typically sits right here, and there is a Lilliput A11 10.1 inch monitor sitting flat with the image reversed and pushed up, and a teleprompter right here. So when I'm actually staring into the camera, I'm looking at a uh, computer screen, and you can see right there my icons and stuff. So uh, very, very useful, it allows me to uh, continue to be engaged with you while able to read my slides or comment on the news or what have you. Now the lights are fairly inexpensive, but the camera is really expensive. So if you are looking to build your own studio, um, I can recommend as um, a different camera, the uh, Logitech C922 runs about $75. And it was my original camera. It does do 1080p and it works great until you're ready to upgrade. It's a very, very reasonable budget option to level up your streams and your content without hurting the wallet. Now I can't even film in here because it's so tight, but the next item is my audio and that's my microphone starting with the Shure SMB7. 
Uh, this microphone is broadcast quality. It is fairly expensive, but it is what professional musicians use, singers, songwriters, etc. cetera, uh, movie acting. You'll see Joe Rogan on his podcast uses this microphone. It is overkill for what I'm doing, but because of the audio issues I have, I wanted to really spend on the audio and kind of eliminate all of the problems that might be caused uh, from audio. Just as a quick note, you can get a budget-friendly option since the Shure SMB runs about $359. A great budget option is the Blue Yeti, which I did run for a while, and if you see me on travel from time to time, this is my travel microphone now. It's an excellent option and runs just about $100. All right, so the next item that on my audio that's absolutely a must, it's, it's what solved all my problems with audio, is the TC Halcyon Mini Go XLR Mini. Now this mixing board right here is fantastic. It's got the physical dials and sliders. I use it every single day when I'm lowering the mic uh, music or increasing it for the podcast. It's got quick uh, beeps and muting for coughing and stuff like that. It shows up in your Windows computer system as four different outputs. So it allows you really to get tight on the granule, granule control over what each of those sliders controls. And honestly, without it, I, I couldn't do the streams the way that I do. It's an absolute huge, huge win for me. They do make a full size Go XLR. I didn't opt for that because I have a stream deck, which I'll get into. But that's also another great option. I would absolutely recommend the Go XLR mixer for anybody doing content creation. As far as headphones go, you can use any kind of headphones you want. I use the Sony uh, CH700Ns. Uh, they're wireless noise canceling, but you'll notice that mine is wired in. I had so many problems trying to use Bluetooth and wireless headsets that led to so many audio issues that I have just wired in everything from my keyboard, my mouse, and my headphones in order to ensure that that isn't a point of failure because when you're actually live streaming and doing content creation, a failure like that can really disrupt and derail the entire thing and it's just, you don't wanna deal with it. So that's what I've opted for. Finally, the one like, you know, fun thing that I have, just kind of like my on-air light, is this um, mic flag, right? You may have seen it on stream. This is from PBS Impact uh, and I'll, I'll link in the description below to them. Uh, they make custom mic flags. You absolutely don't need it, but for me, um, it's a fun splurge, it's a nice bit of polish, and I, I found it to be worth the investment uh, for getting that look and feel of a professional stream. The final piece of uh, kind of audio hardware that many of you are probably familiar with is my Stream Deck. Now I use the Stream Deck for several different things, including doing the sound effects. So like the Carl and all those, that Stream Deck allows me to switch screens, play audio sound effects, and do several other things. If you do get into content creation or live streaming, I cannot, endorse Stream Deck enough. It is absolutely awesome. They make it in a small, medium, and extra large size. Most people buy the medium one, which is the standard one, but I gotta tell you, just like every other content creator, now that I've used it, I wish I had gotten the XL one, and I probably will at some point in the future. You can have multiple pages of buttons, but just having quick access right there without futzing around uh, is a real huge time saver. Now, the final thing kind of driving my system is the computer. Now, I, I custom built this from Build Redo. Uh, it's an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 uh, GPU with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core for the main um, processor. Now, it has 64 gigs of RAM and all the other accoutrements that you would expect. This computer has been fine. I bought it because I started live streaming Steam games, World of Haiku, and I found that my Mac Mini just was absolutely getting throttled. It was about $2,500, but I will say for a budget option, the Mac Mini, which was $600, served me well for a good couple years before I you know, started putting in uh, demands that required greater resources. So you can get a budget option. I will say that some software does not work on Apple products, especially the Mac Mini, which has the M1 chip, but things are getting better. So do your research before you buy, but it is a fantastic budget option. Now, a couple things that are worth mentioning. Uh, I'm not gonna include all the cables and you know USB cables, XLR cables, uh, all those things, but you will note that the system I have does have several mounting so i've got a main arm with two arms that come off on the side to hold the three monitors i have the light on a mount and my teleprompter on a mount with a boom arm for my fill light the reason i do all this is because i really like clean lines and my standing desk actually has wheels on it so i've never had to move it but if i wanted to i could absolutely move it you'll notice like talk about cable management right 
definitely a good cable management going on here. I do enjoy, I do enjoy a good cable management. You can use any keyboard and mouse you want, but I want to call out my particular set. I have a 60% sized mechanical backlit keyboard that is wired as well as a trackball that is wired. I did run wireless for a bit, but just because of everything being so crammed in there, um, I was getting radio interference. So I actually had to wire in in order to, to get around that, that challenge. The reason I use a trackball, you may not like trackballs, but because the desk is so tight, Moving the mouse around, I've accidentally hit the mixing board, I've hit buttons and stuff, I've hit the stream deck, and it just causes problems while on stream. So to have fewer moving parts, less complexity, uh, I chose to go with the trackball and wired. Again, just like the wired headphones, if, if something is failing, if the batteries are dying while you're on stream, it can get really um, con like confusing and kind of mess you up and really throw you off your game. So the fewer points of failure, uh, really the better. So now let's talk about software for a second. Um, I use a couple different softwares, you can too. If you're going to be live streaming, I recommend using Restream. I've used Restream and StreamYard. I actually have uh, plans to both of them, like professional plans that I pay for, but I haven't used StreamYard in probably six months, right? I love Restream for multiple things. One, Restream allows you to pair with other content creators very, very easily. You can push out to several different platforms at the same time. And a lot of the features with like background music and different scenes and settings and stuff like that come pre-filtered. So as you're getting spun up, you can get going really quickly without having to worry about developing like your own digital assets, your countdown timers, your backgrounds, your overlays and stuff like that. So I love Restream. Uh, StreamYard is a, is a you know solid plan B, but Restream is where I'm at. Now for content creation, editing and stuff like that, uh, you have a couple choices. If you're on an Apple, Final Cut Pro is a big one. Adobe Premiere is another popular one. These ones do cost money, uh, but they are excellent. If you're going to be doing editing, you can do some editing in Canva if you want to, but I would encourage you, if you really are gonna be doing straight you know, YouTube videos and content, like produced content, you're gonna to wanna to invest in an editing software and then get somewhat proficient. Many of the editing softwares are very much the same, like the same functionality and stuff like that. So once you learn one, you can kind of pivot to others quite quickly. The final uh, piece of software that I use all the time is Streamlabs OBS. Now Streamlabs OBS, allows me to do all the fancy stuff between switching scenes and having um, transitions that look cool, being able to bring music in and, and music out, and just all the different ways that my stream looks, you know, not, you know, not cookie cutter, not like a Zoom call where you're sharing a screen and stuff like that. That is done in Streamlabs OBS. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this particular video. I hope uh, you found my studio interesting. If you have any questions, there's a link to a kit below that provides you a list of all of the things that I covered in this video, what's currently in my studio, uh, anything that I had in my studio before that I've taken out for various reasons, I did not include except for the budget microphone, the budget um, computer, and the budget camera because I wanted you to have viable options um, that wouldn't, you know, basically cost an arm and a leg in order to get. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in chat or drop them in the comments below. I will uh, do my best to respond to all of them. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with Simply Cyber and I love engaging with the community and watching the studio and the channel grow over the years has been really, really rewarding and really, really fun. So I hope you enjoy this and we will see you in the next one.